out of this mire, this muck and mire that's been imposed upon us. And we're, we're, we're in it deep. We're in it deep. I'm telling you, these people, they, there's no hold barred with these evildoers. They don't care. They want genocide on a level I can't even tell you. I mean, you do the math. We got about 8 billion people on planet Earth now. And the George, according to the, to the makers, the, invent, the creators of the Georgia Guidestones, they want to get the Earth down to 500 million. Well, that means that's only about 1 16th of the population remaining on Earth is what they're after. That's their goal. So the idea that they can't be spraying biological weapons, uh, what's after coronavirus? Are they going to spray something else? Go into lockdown mode and all these people in this industry fail miserably. And, and in, in this industry, they're hurt very badly. And in this industry, they, they don't miss a beat. And in this industry, they flourish during these pandemics. And we're gonna, we've been trained to tolerate this, accept this. And the perpetual debasement of our money through money printing, this national debt. And they've got the mainstream media telling you, hey, the, it's good that your value of your house went up. Not equating that value equals burden to somebody else. If your bill is just like your utility bills, if it keeps going up in leaps and bounds, aren't you glad there's a regulatory commission on that? They can't do that because they could get away with it. How much will people f pay to not freeze to death or to stay cool in the summer? The sky might be the limit. And then they weed out all those that can't afford it. You don't get no soup for you. No energy. No, it's capitalism. That's what they'll call it. We'll, we'll charge whatever the market will bear. That's what they'll say. We'll manipulate. We regulate. We, we do it as we want. Just like those that hold the diamonds. They own all the diamonds. They say, hey, you know what? We'll meter them out as we choose. We're regulating them, yeah, on our basis. But we want a lot of money for those diamonds. We're not letting them go for any less than this or that. You understand how this game works? But that's what they're doing with housing, telling you it's value. The value. Your house is more valuable for no reason. In real estate terms, they call it an unearned increment. It sounds like ill-gotten gain to me. Same thing. Different words. For no reason. Don't ask questions. Just accept your money. Now you got to go buy something else, and then you pay more. Now you got to pay more property taxes, too. You understand? Debasement of currency. The deworthment of currency, the dilution of currency, and telling you it's a good thing. When something costs more, especially an essential human need, and you got the mainstream media telling you that's a good thing, when knowing it's hurting people dire in dire ways, I mean, so many people on the brink of homelessness in California is not funny, and there's a direct correlation between property values, housing values, the mortgages people pay, and the rents. And the majority of California residents are renting now. Do you hear the mainstream media trying to educate you of these statistics, these facts, these truths? Do you? And comparing what they call value to burden, one man's value being another man's burden, what do they do to educate you about that? To teach you there's other ways to look at things besides the way so-and-so trained you or told you. And then everybody else ran with it, started parroting a meme about, whoa, no, I define this as that. But you, my God, I mean, I, yeah, I want to ridicule them. I want to deride them. They're, they're miserable gaggle of, 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 of freaking empty husks of human beings that would sacrifice their souls for a buck because they got these good jobs. <laughs> you see the pay some of these people are making like celebrities. You, you, all these, these mainstream media People, they're all after it. They want those jobs. They want to have the syndicated national level. That's a dream. A uh, hundred million dollar con, whatever the hell they're making. It's ridiculous for spewing out lies and BS. And they know it because journalists generally are not stupid people. But you got to ask why people get involved in a job. And so often people get jobs they know pay well. That's what they look at the bottom line before they decide what courses they're taking in college. It's all about the money, brother. No, it shouldn't be like that. It should, what do I want to do with my life? And that's a thing I can change up at any time I want because nobody is telling me I'm not. That should be our attitude. Is it? No. And we all just accept this as normal. Go with the flow, path of least resistance. Don't make waves. Use your common sense. Believe the definitions we give stuff like, don't worry about God's opinion. That's, 
that's stupid and lofty in theory, but it's a folklore, it's a fairy tale, it's myth. Don't believe that. No, no, value the things the world tells you is equals success. Making a lot of money, being somebody in the eyes of the world, having the prestige, the status, that's what you're after. Only an idiot would suggest otherwise. Yeah, so this guest on that episode of Orange Pill was talking about how their dignity. It's like in order to have any semblance of dignity, you have to purchase it. That's what it, it's going to get a good education and making a lot of money. And that's, you know, that's it. But these people living on the state don't deserve it. They, they Look at them. Look at the way they live. They look at the empirical evidence in front of your face. They don't deserve it. you got to buy it. So I like, you know, I, I really like Max and Stacy as human beings. And seeing Stacy, she's, you know, almost shedding a tear there, wanting to. I mean, about seeing this poor homeless woman uh, pushing her children around in a shopping cart. You know, just, just another bum out there on the streets. And saying, you know, she almost brought a tear to her eye. I mean, yeah, I, I'm glad to see that. And I like, I like his guest. That's my favorite guest he's had in a long time. So it's good stuff. Watch it. But uh, we got to get it together, my friends. That's the message God's telling me, man. We got a very little time left to repent. And that means start ending homelessness now. Forget who's president. Forget all this crap left, right, socialist, capitalist. Forget all that crap. Conservative, liberal, it's all made up crap. Democrat, Republican, made up crap to divide us because we're disempowered when we're divided. We got to unify, come against these freaking monsters. It's serious, grave business, man. And only God by our side can help us. Okay, and with Him, we, they can't stop us. But without Him, they, they're going to every time they're going to confound the righteous, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse until we start listening to God. He's trying to get our attention right now, in a very stern way. Okay, but remember, these monsters want to depopulate the earth. They'll tell you that they don't, but they do. So is there another pandemic coming right on the heels of this one? A whole nother one they got to invent a whole new vaccine for? Do we know? Do you know? I'm not a seer. All I know is God's going to let it get as bad as until we start get he gets our attention. I'm giving it to him now, and I'm trying to persuade you to give it to him now, right away, immediately. And start that repenting is being sorry for neglecting the needs of the downtown. We treat our freaking animals better. We bring them in when it's cold. This is evil. Oh, well, they're domesticated. What do you think they are? They're human freaking beings. God help us. God help us. God have mercy on our wretched souls. I pray that he'll be gent gentle with us. But, I mean, if I'm looking through his eyes, I'm oh, my God. Oh, you sorry bunch of human beings. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, God's probably just... You, should I just destroy all this biological pottery and start fresh? I wonder how many, I mean, you know, God, thank God of his tender mercies because he doesn't care. I mean, if there's five guys that are found worthy and deserving of inheriting eternal life, he'll give it to them. And the rest are going, you know, the other place. So we're on our own. Each man, each woman needs to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Understanding there's one thing God's not that stupid. He's not going to misjudge you. But he's not buying a lot of psycho battle, babble rattling around in my head, your head, or anybody else's head. And it's easy for us to fall into that, that we're filled with psycho babble because we didn't care enough to find out the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth for ourselves, not listening to our parents, not listening to our friends or our peers or our educators, not listening to anybody saying, it's up to me, it's my responsibility. I'm going to be without excuse on the judgment day. If I don't get my act together and have right sound values that are in line with my owner's values, things that will please God, things that will render me like a fragrant aroma in his nostril, and then I will receive true happiness from the grantor of true happiness the Creator God Almighty, our parents, our divine parents. Okay, this is the greatest gift we can ever obtain. Okay, and that's what we should seek. Ask, seek, knock, and you shall receive. You just got to care enough to understand it because it's not difficult and we're all going to be without excuse. It's simple. It's logical. A little child can understand it. We can't deny that. That's the nature of God. He made it really easy for us to understand. 
because he knows we can be thick as a brick. But just showing that we care by doing our own research, finding out for yourself, okay, that makes all the difference in the world. That's evidence of faith. And saying, I care, I give a damn, I love, I am rendered in the image and likeness of my parents, loving, caring. All right, friends, I'm on to some recent current events and other talking points I want to get into. I want to make another correction. I kept talking about my dad when he was in his mid-30s. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis by multiple doctors. And they gave him approximately five years to live with his health conditions being what they were. He got into nutrition, supplements, all this kind of stuff, understanding that the body's like a machine. He attributed his getting a, this multiple sclerosis. His mother died when he was eight years old. He was out in the snow delivering milk and newspaper all day for a dime. He was born during the Great Depression, 1928. So at eight years old, his mother died, and he was basically neglected and uh, just a mean stepmother and his dad didn't pay much heed to him I guess apparently and uh, he was brought up on he ate and up eat hot dogs and coca-cola that's what he says he thinks gave him the multiple sclerosis I wouldn't be surprised he's probably right but at any rate I said he'd live 30 years longer and then the next week I corrected it my math I mean what's going on in my brain I wonder sometimes but then I said 40 years, but then I realized, no, no, he lived another over 50 years. He lived to be 86. So do the math. Mid-30s, say 36, and 50 makes 86, right? I got that right? Okay. So I don't know. You know, sometimes that happens. My brain can shut down for various reasons, and I can't do the most simple math. It happens to me at least once in a while. But, uh, you know, I just want to put that out there. There's a lot to it. I mean, I'm, uh, this coronavirus thing, uh, I say oil of oregano, look into it. Consult your physician. Look into what it does, what it can do for you. And I talk about cod liver oil, not to be confused with fish liver oil. You don't need to lay, take a lot, maybe five tabs, capsules a month. I don't know. Ask your doctor if it's safe for you to do that. Because if they've got you on any kind of medication, you got to watch your P's and Q's. Like vitamin K is like that. you got to watch it because sometimes they're given drugs that have some similar synthetic in there, and you got to watch it. Okay, so consult your physician. Talk to your doctor about any of these things I'm saying. I'm not a doctor. I don't have the credentials. All I know is I was brought up with a guy that knew a whole hell of a lot about it. I had pneumonia when I was 10. I lived in Ireland, and I, I, I was in a little coma. My dad said I was, and I think he's just trying to assuage my my conscience about I, whatever my memories of this but I remember I was very listless lethargic and I'd go into deep sleep for many 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 hours at a time so it was a semi pseudo coma whatever you want to call it but uh, you know I was in the hospital even and I was a dying little boy you know 10 year old boy but my dad put me on regimen got me out of the hospital put me on a cod liver oil and he was giving me b-complex and making me eat it and I got better I mean, it damaged my lungs. My left lung is where I had it. <laughs> so I have uh, chronic bronchitis, but I'm also a smoker. So the phlegm is an issue. But, you know, with the cod liver oil lubricating things in there, I don't worry too much about it. I really don't. It doesn't bother me. I'm not freaked out at all about my respiratory health, even being a smoker. And part of it is because I believe what he told me about the cod liver oil. So I would tell you to do that. The vaccine, a lot of blacks say they're not too good. Not good. Did you know the demographics, the most educated areas, the most educated, just a matter of fact, have the lowest vaccination rates. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All these people, oh, they're all safe. Take the vaccine. Take it. Don't be a carrier and all. It's like, dude, if you're inoculated, you choose to have a vaccine and vaccinate your children, then you're protected, right? So keep your hands off my freaking body. You got that? 10% of people have a phobia about needles, period. I've developed it over the entire, I've had those damn vaccines. My parents believed in those. They vaccinated my son day one for hepatitis B, from my understanding. Ended up getting SIDS, perfectly healthy baby, born perfectly healthy. Two weeks later, dead, no autopsy. Oh, we just, it's SIDS, generic. Uh, we, uh, we're not going to investigate it. We're not going to talk about the vaccine damage fund, this super fund that's set up to protect the vaccine companies because they threaten, well, if you don't insulate us from lawsuits, we're not going to give you our vaccines. 
Oh, it's done a huge, vast public expense. All these people have done very well. Coronavirus has been a, a mana from heaven for these people. And I'm a nut. I'm a radical nut. Be against AIDS. You know what? If I choose to do it, I'll do my own research. Yeah, I want that vaccine. No, I don't want that one. 